Okay, so I was just chatting with Heidi, and I was uh, telling her about a uh, case that I took several years ago, back in the beginning. So this was uh, before Heidi became a volunteer with us, and she's like, what? Tell me about this. And I'm like, I'll record it so everybody hears it at once, and I don't have to repeat myself. So this is really interesting. Um, A client came to us saying, I have a match to a biological father but I know who my father is and that is not my dad. And I said, all right, let's take a look and and see if you're right. Cause you know, DNA surprises and all. So I get her DNA, pull up her tree, start creating everything. And she has a DNA match to this man um, that's 68 years old and coming back as her dad. And I, I, I just don't understand why she's got a match to a dad if he's not her dad. Because interestingly enough, she also has a match to the man who raised her, his sister, as a full aunt. What could this possibly be? And when you're building out the tree and sorting the networks, everything comes back to the genetic father being the man that raised her. Hmm. Very strange, right? So a couple different scenarios are playing in my head. And I'm like, you know what? Do you mind um, if I just give this man a call and ask him questions? And so I did. And I called him and he had uh, no idea who this girl's mother was. There was nowhere in his life that intersected with the family. And he just didn't understand and neither did I. And he wanted to know as well if he had a daughter out there. Um, And so I started asking him some questions, and I said, by chance, by chance, I want you to pause. What question would you have asked this man, okay, to make make sure that he uh, is the genetic father, but he's not the father? Okay, unpause it. I said, did you by chance have a stem cell transplant? And he said, I did. I said, and did you take your DNA test before the stem cell transplant or after? He said, after. I said, okay, I'll call you back. So I talked to my client and I said, okay, by chance, um, have you donated stem cells uh, for cancer research? And she said, no. I said, all right. Did you, did you have babies and donate their cord blood? She said, yes, she did. I said, well, okay. I've got this figured out. What happened? And by the way, this is normally caught in the lab and it would not produce DNA results for anybody. It would say no. But it did slip through. Um, And so what happened was he was the recipient of her daughter's stem cells when her daughter was a baby and the stem cells were about to, the cord blood was about to expire. Um, and so he became the genetic identical twin of the daughter. And because of his age, ancestry predicted that he was her father versus him being her child, right? There's an age, that's how it's part of the prediction tool. Based on his age, he can only be her father. He can't be her brother or her child. He has to be her father because he inherited 50% of they share 50% of the DNA. Uh, The client's daughter got 50% of her DNA. So when she donated the uh, cord blood, the recipient got that DNA as well, right? So that's the story. If you donate cord blood and the recipient takes a DNA test, that recipient is going to be a carbon copy of the person's whose cord blood they received. Um, it, there, there's a bunch of science behind that. They have to receive cord blood twice, and the first one, the first uh, bout of cord blood wipes out their DNA, and then the second bout, um, the second bout batch implants um, a carbon copy of that DNA to that recipient. I know that that's very confusing, but the end result is the man is not her genetic father. He is the recipient of her daughter's cord blood, and our client's father really is her father.
beautiful ending. And by the way, they, they did connect and they uh, planned to meet. I don't know if they ever met. I hope they did meet uh, because that was just such a generous uh, donation on part of my client and her little girl.